In modern America, there are almost no legal incentives or benefits for a man to get married or cohabitate with a partner. Everything men used to get from marriage can be received outside of one now that it is no longer seen as shameful to do so by modern standards. If someone files for divorce, let them leave with what they paid for. Nothing else. No child support, no money. Parents get 50-50 custody unless one opts out, but even then, no dollar to the ex. If one can't afford to raise, house, clothe, and feed kids part-time, then they don't get custody. Also, mandatory paternity tests at childbirth and in the event of divorce. If not his kid, the woman has to make full monetary reparations and dollar for emotional damage and jail time for fraud. There has been a lot of talk about many American states ending no-fault divorce. A lot of lawyers are going to lose millions in net profit if this goes nationwide. Feminists are going to have to come up with something else like a contract situation ship. If she gets pregnant, he has to take the child and she gets the money. Either way, a feminist is not going down without a fight for ownership of her right to have it all. These women were given a taste of power and now the addiction is chaotic. The change that happens with the end of no-fault divorce is that if a person leaves without providing a reason, they don't get paid for leaving. This change takes alimony, half the savings, retirement, investments, and the family home off the table if she leaves because she's bored or changed her mind. End of permanent alimony in Florida, mandatory paternity in TN, now Texas ending no-fault divorce. The Republicans have started to notice some social issues they can use to gain supporters before the upcoming election year. We will definitely see more bills like this across the county, and it will pick up the bulk of male voters over liberal issues. Fewer families mean fewer children. Equaling fewer future voters for politicians to keep their agenda and voters to stay in power. Taxes to pay their salary are also part of the equation. Just like anyone in a position of power, they will do anything to keep it. Even if they have to give up a little now to keep a lot later. Just how they like to create problems for a generation and then to come up with solutions, albeit in their favor later for it. Regardless, passport bros up. This is one of the biggest wins for men so far in the US. The reason why in the old days people rarely got divorced was because they needed serious reasons like physical abuse, infidelity, or abandonment with proof, not just allegations. I'm so glad this is back in effect, and now they won't have a choice but to get married for real love and go the distance in marriage. Politicians aren't doing this because of passport bras, they are doing it because of low birth rates, which has been a known issue for decades. Low birth rates mean fewer people paying into social security. That's what they're really worried about. Politicians want the money and don't care about what's right or wrong. Feminism and its consequences have been a disaster for modern society. The fact is, no-fault divorce wouldn't be such a big issue if child support and custody plus alimony were more evenly balanced slash fair for men. The socioeconomic status of women has risen making it more difficult for them to satisfy their hypergamy. The residual effect of this has artificially satisfied their biological imperative. The boss, the pet, and the apartment are in lieu of the husband, the child, and the house. This causes a conflict of interest when looking for a suitable mate choice. The government may take away the no-fault divorce, but it will be for the sake of keeping the working class domesticated. We all know that the government needs us to be shitted on and to achieve the bottom lines for the corporate snakes. It's merely for tax purposes. The court system will still favor the conviction of black men and other minorities and will continue to give women the benefit of the doubt. But it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I think men will still travel abroad. This is for younger guys. Remember, under no-fault divorce, if you marry a woman and are together for 10 years or so, all that time you're contributing to the mortgage and investing in a 401k. And if at some point she decides she's found a hotter guy, she can file for divorce and you lose half of all that you invested while she just moves on to another guy. Don't do it. Lots of novel ideas that sound good at first have atrocious, unforeseen consequences. 
no-fault divorce is a textbook example. We didn't foresee that it would encourage women to marry for money and soon divorce in order to take that money for themselves. Women are open that they are doing this nowadays in videos. Women call the first marriage a starter marriage, meaning that she envisions it in advance as temporary. There's nothing worse than going to the home you worked your back off for to pick up the kids for your weekend and another man is sitting in your lazy boy watching your big screen TV. To all you young men think about it, just don't do it. A girlfriend is just as good and if things do not work out you still get to keep what is yours you don't have to watch another man enjoy what you worked for. We all know that the legal system is designed to work in favor of women and use men's resources to pay for their financial expenses for the rest of their lives. Women were never aligned with their men in what they wanted to achieve in life. And there have been many cases where women had actually planned to marry wealthy men, only to divorce them and live off of divorce money without having to work for the rest of their lives. Women have deceived men into marriage only to take away their resources. A lot of the credit goes to the Megto movement that allowed men to share their experiences and opened each other's eyes regarding the true nature of women. With no-fault divorce, the power is in women's hands and they tend to abuse it to get rich quickly and move on with their lives. This is why more men are not getting married. This is why more men don't want to get into committed relationships with women. With circumstances such as these, I don't blame them. I would do the same and stay away from marriage. No matter where you are, and no matter what age group you belong to, always know that it's not necessary that once you're married happily, it's going to stay like that forever. Women need constant validation, which I personally believe is just a cop-out for not being content with who they are at certain points in their lives and not truly being in control of their own emotions. The problem with no-fault divorce is that 90% of the time, the man loses custody of his children, his home, and half his money. It quadrupled the male suicide rate. Two slash three words of all males' suicides are from divorced men. The government financially incentivizes women to divorce men. We literally have a situation where being masculine has been all but made illegal. Your typical family court or divorce court judge will deal with one man a year on average who will be compelled to end themselves because they can't fulfill court orders. What ended the idea and institution of marriage was the promotion of broken families. No-fault divorce was just the thing that took down the last wall, preventing the family unit from breaking from the said promotion of broken families. If the laws were implemented fairly and made sense, things wouldn't be nearly as bad as we are today. In fact, Governments do all they can to make things unfair. Just look at common law marriage. Men don't even have to get married to be deemed married by law. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. And let us know your thoughts on this in the comments. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.